let's say we've now picked a place. Um, let's say we have decided the why and we know why we're going. What kind of research do you think people should be doing in advance versus leaving up to that serendipity you described earlier? What I like to do is, so I'm just going to give you an example of from the, the 52 places trip I did, because I mean, I think it's very out of the ordinary, of course, but I think there's a lot that, that can be learned for it. One of, one of the things was that I, because I was going to 52 places in 52 weeks, I didn't have time to prepare, right? I, I, I luckily had someone at the times who was helping me and she would send me like a really great, like one pager of like, here's what you need to know about currency. And here's what you need to know about, you know, public transportation. And here's like the top 10 things to do when you Google the place, right? Like the, these are the big tourist hits or whatever. I would try to like knock out those 10 things in like an afternoon and be like, okay, so I've done the brass tacks. I've seen that now, like, let me actually have an experience. Um, you know, and, and I think that goes back to this idea of like travel being uh, more serendipitous, more spontaneous, more connective than it is extractive. I think a lot of the times we think of travel as extractive where it's like, I need to go in there, get things that make me fulfilled and leave and that's and wash my hands of it and plan the next trip. Um, and I think leaving things open has been what has always led to the best experiences in terms of preparation, like, yeah, have a place to stay. If it's city based, find a place to stay. I think beforehand, if you can go as local as possible, and I don't mean Airbnb, I mean, Airbnb is fine if you, that's what you want to do, but I think there's nothing better than staying at like a family run bed and breakfast. I think it's the best, you know, bathrooms down the hall, you know, uh, Dad's making you breakfast in the morning. Mom's giving you tips of where to go shopping. You know, like that vibe, I think, opens up so much um, just in terms of local recommendations, in terms of the feeling of being a local, in terms of supporting local economies. You're staying at like a family run hotel versus the Hilton or whatever. Like that, that thing goes a long way in terms of where you're putting your, your, your money. Um, so I think that's, that's a great place to start. I've had incredible experiences literally just from, you know, an innkeeper in Bulgaria who over the course of five days of me staying there kind of gains my trust. And all of a sudden he's showing me old family photos and he's showing me into the basement where there's like a fresco on the wall from like the Ottoman times. And he like keeps it under like behind glass because it's like his greatest possession now. And it's in this house that he he's owned and his family has owned. So just like these experiences that you unlock by like going local, by going small. Um I feel like you didn't ask me where 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 to where you should stay, but I do think that is kind of where most people start. And I think um, thinking even the why in that decision goes a long way. You could you could you could just look at TripAdvisor and go at the one with the most reviews with five stars, um, but then you're just kind of doing what everyone else did, right? And is there a time and a place sometimes for staying in like the city center, being really close to things? I don't know if the the you know kind of bed and breakfast are always kind of located in that area but you know maybe you do both maybe you do the rural bed and breakfast for a couple of days and then you stay in in the middle of a city where you're not really going to be spending time at the hotel anyway um but i think i think to go back to kind of what my first steps are in feeling that i'm connected to a place what i learned to do pretty quickly um, on my reporting trips is that and i think this is it's reporting specific but i think it's travel uh, general general tips for travel too is when I get to a place, especially if it's a city, uh, first thing I do is I leave the camera in the hotel room. I put the phone away in my pocket and I just walk. I'll give myself like an hour and a half, maybe two hours. No destination in mind. I just want to get the pulse of the place. I just want to feel it. And maybe I'll get distracted and like sit down for a beer and watch the city go by that way or a coffee or sit in a park for a little bit. But I just want to be there. And that means not looking at my phone. The great thing about Google Maps is that you can get completely lost and then use it to find your way back, right? So I just like, if I think a street looks interesting, I'll walk down that. If I, you know, see, see a scene happening at the local park, I'll sit down and watch that for 20 minutes. If, if I strike up a conversation with someone, I'll let that go and see, you know, see where it takes me. Um, but the, it's just such a small thing, but it goes such a long way. If you're just thinking like, of course, you're going to want to document things. You're going to want to post things to Instagram. You're going to want to share it with friends, all this stuff. But just like wait a couple of hours. Do it, do it, you know, starting that evening. Give yourself at least a few hours to feel like you're there and you're in the place. And maybe you'll see places where you're like, oh, I need to come back and photograph that. I need to come back during sunset because I bet this, the you know, photographs here are great then or 
whatever else that you need to do. And I'm thinking of that professionally, of course, as a photographer and a writer, but I think everyone's into documenting their trips. So everyone's thinking of that. But if you give yourself time to just be, um, it's really amazing how much better you, you get, you get the place, you understand it and you feel it in a way that you don't, again, if you're just like extracting content from it, from the moment you hit the ground. You didn't mention this, but one thing I like to do is where, where possible and where not ridiculously inconvenient, get to wherever you're going using public transportation when you first arrive, taking the train, taking a bus. There's, there's just, you see people in their normal environment versus if you were to, you know, take a taxi or call a, an Uber in another country, you're just kind of sitting in the back, uh, you know, just moving. So I feel like your trip starts sooner when you, when you do that. And I think it's, yeah, public transportation is a great tip. I think you really get to know a place, you know, there's cities that I know geographically through their subway maps versus like their actual maps, you know, like I know that this stop is here and this stop is here. And that's, that's my understanding of, of geography. And I think it's something that like, as people get older and as people have more money and all these things, you stop doing that. Like when, when you're a backpacker and you're, you know, living off the $20 in your pocket, you're taking public transportation or walking because you're not about to drop half your budget on a taxi, right? Now, I think, you know, at least for me, who's older and whatever, it's much easier for me to be like, oh, I'll just take an Uber. But if you force yourself to, there are, there's a lot we can learn from our early days of travel, backpacking and whatever else when you're pinching pennies, um, including the fact that like, yeah, public transportation is going to save you money, but it also like, you just get to understand, you're seeing the places in between. You're seeing the kind of people that come on on certain stops and go off get off at certain stops. You're like, you get a really better understanding of the place um, just by, by getting on a train or a bus or, or like, you know, in South Africa, the, the combis, the little mini the minivans that go around. Um, you just get a, such a better understanding and people will help you too. And that's another thing that I think it's intimidating. Of course it is, but if you're lost, people will help you. I, I, I remember trying to find my way around the, the, the metro system in Tashkent, Uzbekistan, um, which is incredible. I mean, that's for, in, in the case of like former Soviet countries, take the subway just to see the metro stations. They're like works of art. It's unreal. Um, so I'm taking the, 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 the metro around in Tashkent, and I was just so confused. I was like, I didn't, I didn't understand the maps. I was sitting there with like this, this, this you know, two handfuls of coins and bills, um, just like un unsure about the denominations. I was jet lagged. And someone like saw me immediately and came up to me and like in broken English was like, where are you trying to go? I like I said the name of the stop and just held out my hands with all the coins in it. And he just like picked out what I needed, put it in the machine, gave me the ticket and let me on my way. You know, it's just, like you put your trust in someone. Someone's going to help you out. Um, and, and just that interaction, too. Like, I still remember it and I'll remember it probably forever. Just that small interaction um, that you're not going to get if you just call an Uber. Yeah, th those things happen. So we had the same thing happen in uh, Aleppo, Syria. We got into the city. We took a taxi from Turkey, and we. Which fun fact: taxis from Turkey. I mean, I'm sure this is different now, but taxis from Turkey to Syria because gas was like ten percent of the cost. Right? It was so cheap. The taxis would go for free almost. It was like you know the the cost to go from Turkey to Syria was almost nothing as long as you had no bags, because there were special taxis where their entire trunk was just gas tanks. Uh, and so you would go into Syria and it would be super cheap, but you'd get dropped off and we had, we were staying uh, couch surfing in a suburb and we had no clue what we were doing. And a random person came up who spoke no English, but kind of got the sense that we were lost, called someone, handed me the phone. So just a stranger is handing me a cell phone and I answer it and this person says, hey, you don't know me, but my brother, says he thinks you're lost so he called me and if you want i can you can tell me where you're going i'll tell him and he can help you get there but he would love if you stop by his house and have some tea first so like it was this experience that i think many people could just not be open to um or think it's scary and i, and, and I want to get at some point to before we stop to talk about you know risk and safety and that kind of stuff but being open to those things has been some of the best experiences we have 